Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Break the Cycle with me, your host, Joshua Smith. Uh, folks, we got a great one for you tonight. I'm very excited. Uh, I say that every night. I really do, but I, I am. I'm just excited. I love doing the show for you guys. I love that I have these wonderful guests that are always willing to come on and talk with me because I'm just not as smart as them. So it's nice to have people come host my show that are much, much smarter than me. Uh, but let's start off with some sponsors. Of course, we have Lorenzotti.coffee for all your delicious Italian coffee needs delivered directly to your door. Bring the taste of Italy home. Use BTC at checkout for a 10% discount. And my friend, my partner, the coolest guy you know, TopLobster.com. For all your wonderful graphic design needs, like this great In the Wars Scott Horton shirt that I'm wearing today, uh, you can also buy that there, bright red, and make a statement everywhere you go using BTC at checkout for a 10% discount. Or you can join the Patreon, the Subscribe Star, which are both backslash Break the Cycle JS, or become a YouTube channel member here underneath any of my videos on the join link and get into a secret Discord server where you will get brand new Top Lobster designs up to two weeks early at like a 30% discount. Top Lobster's awesome. If you haven't seen his work, go to toplobster.com and check it out. And of course, executive producers of the show, anthemplanning.com for all your emergency and uh, crisis planning needs. Check them out today. See what they can do for your business, home, or personal life. They're doing a job that the government has historically sucked at much cheaper and much more efficiently. Guys, like I said, great show tonight. Great guest. Very excited. We got all that out of the way again uh, for the 73rd time. I think this is our 73rd show. Uh, he is one of the hosts of the Slurp Gang podcast. And uh, let me make sure he's unmuted. Sorry. Uh, and he is quite possibly... Uh, one of the most feared people by neocons everywhere. He is Mr. Ace Arcus. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on again. I know it's great. It's weird. We got video this time, buddy. Yeah, we do. Yeah, this is the for my first public technically appearance on video. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. I I've gr I jumped right in front of uh, of Mark and, and Lions of Liberty because they're I think they're releasing on Monday, and I'm like yeah. oh, I'm like uh oh I got to do this. He said he said I could be the first. <laughs> Yep. So uh, we got we got the face reveal, I, although we've seen the pictures. We already knew you were pretty. We already knew. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. So so what have you been up to? How's the podcast going? Oh, it's been it's been going great. Just, you know, arguing on Twitter as usual. No, yeah, of course. So you, I don't think uh, I don't think anybody quote tweets as much as you. No, no. Yeah, I, I've uh, I don't know how my I don't know why I have followers even like I don't know why they put up with it. I'm Dude. happy they do, but I'm. Well, we, we enjoy it, man. I mean, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's not like it's not like you're uh, it's not like you're quote tweeting dumb shit. I mean, I mean, sure, from the other people you're quote tweeting dumb shit, but you always have a really good rebuttal, and these people just continue to go with you. I don't know when you sleep. Do you sleep? Uh, yeah, I do. I don't need much sleep actually. I usually only get around like maybe four hours of sleep a night, uh, and I can just go off of that. So I'm not a big sleeper. Still pretty young, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give it a few years, it gets worse. I promise you. I promise yeah, you. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so what have you been up to, man? Besides the the arguing on Twitter, I know I know you uh, you went to Childeberg. I saw pictures of you yeah. there. That looked oh, like yeah. a blast. I went to Childeberg. Childeberg was uh, by far the best social event I've ever been to in my life. It's I can't recommend enough that people go next year. Um, like if you can make out time to go, then I would just say go. It, it's fantastic. Sure, sure. It's it's really funny. Before the show, a bunch of people were uh, DMing me. You got to ask Ace about this. You got to ask Ace about that. You know what my response was? Super chats, man. Hit the super <laughs> chats. They're they're active. You could do them for as little as like two bucks. I always I always ask the super chats. Last night I had comedian Josh Denny on. Uh, he actually had a show on Food Network called Ginormous Food, and uh, uh, there's like he's got a, like an army of trolls that chase him around on podcasts. They were really cool though because they threw money. All the whole show, I mean, over uh, several hundred dollars asking questions of Josh Denny. And it was like, I have this policy while I'm still small enough to ask all the super chats during the show because, you know, I, I know the time is rapidly coming for this right. show where I won't be able to ask them all the time. And that sucks. I'm, but also, it's a good, it's a good problem to have. Um, so if you guys, right, have, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you guys have questions for Ace, drop super chats, man. We'll we'll talk about them. But I want to talk about your debate. So you have a debate okay. coming. You have a debate a debate coming out publicly on Monday. Yes. It's already released on Lions of Liberty's uh, uh, Patreon. I went and checked it out today. It's it's amazing. I mean, you won. 
Oh, well, oh, I thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it's funny because I came, I came from the side of Brad Palumbo, right? Hmm. Um, Several years ago, I was, you know, and for you guys who don't understand or don't know, the debate was over whether political violence was okay or not. In a democratic society. In a democratic society, right. And I came from the side that would have said no, you know, a while back. And um, obviously I'm a full blown anarchist now. And I've come to the side of, uh, you know, I think that we're, we're coming rapidly coming to a place if we haven't already hit it, where we have been so ruled by tyranny um, that you can no longer say that I'm not fighting out of self-defense, right? Um, Right. But what were your thoughts on the debate, man? Uh, Well, I I wanted to think, I I, I think Brad was a very good sport for putting up with it, and Mark was great for hosting as, you know, he always is. Um, I was very, I was pretty happy with my performance overall. I think um, I wasn't too, I wasn't personally too persuaded by um, Brad's arguments, but he wasn't persuaded by mine either. So it was like neutral, you know what I mean? Um, but overall, I, I was, I was very happy with my performance. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and so what are, just, you know, you gave a really good opening statement, um, but what can you, can you just break down your thoughts on political violence and, and why you, you know, you came to the conclusion that it is okay? Yeah, sure. So um, political violence, uh, you know, from a libertarian perspective, which Brad is, right? So we're starting from that foundation, from that viewpoint. Um, it is it is okay in certain situations because vi- democracy itself, like political rule itself, is violence initiated on people, right? So every time a, a politician passes a law, that is a threat of violence against people that the enforcers, the state enforcers, which are cops in most cases, will initiate violence on peaceful people if they do not comply with that law, right? So the state is actually the first one who initiates the violence. And from a libertarian perspective, if you believe in self-ownership, if you believe that you have a right to be free from initiated coercion, then it logically implies that you have a right to be free from these people's violent threats on you and then you know their direct violence on you when they go to enforce these laws. Sure. So, I mean, is there is there any time in America's history that you can point to that since the founding that you think that, you know, it wasn't that we weren't being uh, aggressed upon? Uh, no, I, I mean, I, I'm an anarchist, so I, I personally believe that every single law in, in general, most laws in general are political violence themselves. They're they're initiatory aggression, right? Now maybe you could say laws against murder or not, right? Because they're those are defensive in nature. Those say that you're not allowed to this person's not allowed to aggress in certain certain situations. But that's a law that's focused that is not does not apply to the state, right? The state does not apply that law to themselves. So um I would say no. Sure, sure, absolutely. Uh so what where where was Brad coming from in this debate? So Brad believed that if you had, um, if you opened the door to say that political violence was okay in certain situations, then therefore the implication would be that it would be okay in all situations, which I, I, I don't, I, I didn't find that argument is persuasive. And I, I don't mean to uh, straw man his argument. So I, I definitely recommend people like watch the debate and, you know, um, check me on that. But his uh, argument was essentially that if we open the door to some political violence is justified, then we have to essentially um, concede that all political violence is justified all the time for any reason. And I disagree with that. I think if you're a libertarian, the NAP and you know self-ownership and you know the whole libertarian creed essentially binds you to a, it gives you a specific reason as to why um, political violence is justified. It's not to say that, well, it's just justified, therefore we have to let everyone commit political violence for whatever reason they, they want. Sure, sure. So, so you look at something like January 6th, which we've talked about on the yeah. podcast a lot. Um, and, you know, we know probably it didn't go down the way we're told it went down, regardless. Right. Um, we know that, you know, a lot of the, the MAGA dudes are just fighting for more tyranny for their, of their own flavor. Sure. But do you see something like January 6th? I mean, do you see that as a justified reaction to what's been going on in America? Oh, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, like you can say that, uh, you know, the, the people who are there did not, obviously they weren't libertarians. They did not want like libertarian ends or anything. Right. They didn't want to like abolish the state. That That's all true. I can see that. Um, but like when people talk about how how terrible it was or like how awful it was, it's like that place is a den of murderers and thieves. Right. Like Like these people kidnap people. They starve children in other countries. And then you're going to get mad about, you know, oh, they, you know, busted down a window and marched through the Capitol. 
like the like like it's just insane to me it's like the um the people in that building those congressmen those are the real murderers those are who those are the people who you should really be angry with uh, they they start wars they incarcerate um you know th- hundreds of thousands of people in this country through their laws and i i think that um any li- any libertarian especially uh, talking about how terrible one six is is just you know aiding state power Sure. Yeah. Libertarians. Well, it's, it's, it's mostly the, it seems to be the blue pills, you know, mm-hmm. they're like, right. Oh, one six, everyone needs to be locked up and thrown away. And it's like, yeah, dude, I thought you were a libertarian, man. Right. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't make any damn sense to me. I'm, you know, I, I'm one of those people, you know, if they're going to use, if they're going to take political prisoners, right? Like, like, like people like Ross and, and Julian Assange and, and Edward Snowden and, and lock them up basically to, to make a statement that should tell you all you need to know about what the state is capable of. Right. Right. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're super familiar with Ross's case. I did my, what my third show or second show or something was on Ross. Mm-hmm. I did a whole breakdown. Actually. In fact, I reached right out to you cause I was like, uh, oh, I don't know if anybody knows more about it than you, maybe you. And Oh, I, I would, I would not say that there's a lot of people who are way more versed on it than I am, but I, but I appreciate that. Sure. But I, I mean, I went through, I started going through like the, what court documents you can get your hands on. Yeah. Uh, I watched the documentary that the, the dude from Bill and Ted put out, which is an amazing documentary, by the way, if you haven't seen, I'm sure you've seen it, but, uh, the deep, Web. Yeah, it's if you haven't seen it like check check out deep web man it's it's funny because it's narrated by keanu reeves and it's made by it the is. other guy from bill and ted and it's like wow these guys are fucking based <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah uh because they definitely put like a good spin on it they never they never tried to make him out to be the bad guy ever yeah it was very fair right but you see you see these kinds of actions from the state and people um uh, you know people act like there's no justification for going up against these these people man you know what yeah, I mean? And I don't get it. Yeah, it's like like at a certain point, you have to reconcile the fact that these people are actually monsters. And I, I don't mean this like to be hyperbolic about it. Like these people, they starve children to death in other countries. Right. Like what what can can you imagine a more horrible thing to do to someone? But like I, it's hard for me to imagine. Right. And these people do it on a regular basis with impunity. Yep. So to say that, you know, you're not allowed. These people are somehow on another moral playing field or another moral level, it's to say that, well, we we just have to accept subjugation and the subjugation of, you know, all these other people who are being terrorized in other countries because of these politicians' laws. Right. That they made up. Yeah. That they made up. We I mean yeah. we don't have you know, we don't have one of those representative governments where we get to uh choose what laws we have in the country, right? I mean it's all up to Congress and right. and, and the Senate and, and the executive branch. And it's like uh, who was I? Was I talking? I was. I think. I think it was Josh Denny last night was talking about how he thinks uh, Congress should be chosen like they choose jury duty. No, oh, like randomly. Yeah, and then if you do a good job, you can get elected to the Senate. And mm. I was like, oh, that'd be a pretty funny. Uh, that'd be a pretty funny way to have our our government, right? Like you just automatically get something in the mail. Like you're a congressman for this term. You're like, what the fuck? Right. And then and then yeah. you have to do it because the best people for the job are the ones that don't want to do it. Right. That's that's true. Yeah. yeah. But then you also have to factor in like them being there. How much of a corrupting influence would that be? You know what I mean? So you always have to. Right. Uh, well, and how, that. and how corrupt would the selection process be? I mean, you know, right. There's always going to be a selector right yeah. in that process. So you can't ever say it's completely unbiased. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, we are getting some some super chats here. Marshall Forward, five dollars super chat. Thank you. He said, "Is that Ace in the Flesh, Free Ross?" Yes. That that is, and yes, Free Ross, please. Yeah, yeah. Ace. That is Ace in the Flesh. I, am I the first podcast to have the face reveal? Uh, publicly, yes. That's mm-hmm. so great. That's so great. Hey, Mark, yeah. suck it. Mark Claire, suck it. I told. <laughs> well, well, I was. I mean, it's not public, public, but I was on. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I told. Uh, I told Mark today. I said. I said. Listen. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna join your patreon right now okay <laughs> I have my own patreon that I'm trying to build up uh and and it, you know make this a, a good job for my family uh but when I get paid I said when I get paid I'll join the symbol level if you let me watch the the, the debate early because I you know I can oh, okay. so so I I told him I joined the symbol level which is five dollars a month for for Lions Liberty and they're, they're a great show I mean and they got all kinds yeah. of shit over there I mean they you know like yeah the felony Fridays and 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 Brian McWilliams I mean that's a really good it's a good podcast network. There's no, oh, yeah. I mean, the, like guys. the whole Liberty space, you could say kind of started with like the lines of Liberty crowd, right? It was sure. kind of like everything else kind of like orbited it in the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Those guys, those guys are absolutely great. Um, yeah. Drew Hancock, 
Ten dollar super chat. Thank you, sir. D Drew Hancock in the chat. Everybody, we got the best the best chats. Uh, Drew says one Ace is even more handsome than I expected. Oh, uh, thank you. Two, why is Ace an open borders person? Has he never heard of the welfare state? Oh, well, I mean, I guess we could get into that. Yeah, I mean, it's been bit. a hot topic recently, especially sure. with Dave and and all them guys. So. Sure. Um, so I, I think it's important. This is uh, like probably what besides for like abortion, this is probably like one of the more hotly debated topics within libertarian circles. Um, I defend. So I, I should define what I mean by open borders. Right. I, so when I say open borders, I don't mean a state enforcement in the sense that the state allows people crossing the border to violate property after they've crossed the border. Right. I, I merely mean that the state stops imposing its laws, restricting people from crossing the border. Um, if now uh, some people will say that the uh, net ta like uh, Hoppe's argument, which is like the net taxpayer argument, right? The public owns essentially all the land, like legitimately owns all the land the state controls. Um, I will agree with that to a certain extent in the sense that if, if you had like um, a library or a school or something that was publicly owned, I would argue that the people who use it are the actual homesteaders, right? Um, I'm less convinced of that on uh, unused land, such as a lot of land around the border that the state controls, but has never really been developed or homesteaded in any real sense. So I don't think that can be really counted as legitimate private property in the sense. If it was, I would agree with the net taxpayer argument, but I'm not convinced on that. So I think like uh, the state has no right to exclude people from stepping into unhome unhomesteaded land, essentially. Um, I, that is not an endorsement of anything after what immigrants do after they cross the border, though. And I think that's a very important distinction, right? I'm not justifying um, like any like private property trespass they would do afterwards or getting on welfare. Sure. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I I hold a very similar view to you. Um, I, I'm probably a lot different than some of these other people, though, obviously, because I believe that. I believe borders are mostly bullshit um, mm -hmm. unless, you know, if, if, if I'm going to stay true to being an anarchist, cause I am, you know, at my heart, an anarchist, uh, a capitalist anarchist, obviously. Um, then I, I believe that all borders should be privatized, um, you know, around your own private property. It's the only place you have a say uh, right. in where they are. But I do understand the net taxpayers argument as well. Um, you know, if, if you're forced to, uh, cohabitate a uh, uh, part of land with other people and you're paying for, you know, the infrastructure and the schools and all this shit. And even if you don't use the schools, you're paying for the schools. Even if you don't yeah. use the infrastructure, you're paying for the infrastructure. So I can understand why it would be, you know, an argument for people like that. But I, I believe that obviously the state should be abolished and we should have our own private borders. But, you know, right. I know, especially within the Mises, uh, thought and Mises Institute and the Mises caucus. I mean, there's a lot of different views when it comes to property, not property. I think we all have the same about the same uh, image of what private property should entail. It's the stuff that you own. You know, I don't, I, a lot of us aren't, a lot of us aren't in the, you know, the, the public or the, uh, what is it? The, the private versus personal, personal. property yeah. argument. I think that's bullshit. I think there is no personal property. I think it's all private property. Um, I don't know. I, how do you feel about that? I know you're, you, you kind of label yourself a market anarchist, which is. Yeah. I, I mainly agree with that. Yeah. I, I think the personal versus private property distinction is kind of, um, just, it does, I, I think it's incoherent because I, I think it's internally contradictory in how it's usually laid out. Um, they, I think a lot of them just make uh, assumptions um, that they just they create assumptions to make it so that private property is illegitimate by its own definition, which I think is kind of um, a weird way to go about it. So they kind of intentionally create this um, this like um, ravine between personal property and private property. And I think it, it doesn't really exist or doesn't need to exist. Sure. Yeah, it's funny. I actually had a uh, I did a debate. Um, I don't do a lot of debates, man. I, I would like to do more debates. I enjoy debating. Um, my first ever live debate that I ever did was with Nick Sarwark in 2018 <laughs> at the national convention in right. front of 14 or 1500 people. And I got destroyed. I mean, absolutely destroyed, but it was the, the debate was on the party and how the party runs and what the party should be. It wasn't about like ideology or any of that shit that I'm super well versed in. It was about a party that I had never been the chair of. He had right. been the chair for two terms, was trying to get, the, you know, so he had more knowledge of the, of the, uh, the way the, the, the organization ran. But when it comes to like ideological debates, a lot of people think I'm stupid because of that debate. But I mean, I just debated Larkin Rose for two and a half hours a couple months ago. Like I'm, I'm smart enough to debate, but, um, I actually had a debate, 
uh, with with uh, libertarian socialist Mike. Um, uh, are you, do you know do you know Mikester on Twitter? Do you guys you guys know? Oh, who he is? Um, I'm terrible with names, so I might, but I, it's not ringing a bell at the moment, unfortunately. Well, he ran for chair uh, in 2020 against me. He didn't do very well, and um, in fact, he he ended up. Uh, not I think getting like 20 votes or something but um, I had a debate with him a couple of years ago three years ago uh, on on this you know property norms and stuff for for mm-hmm. uh, libertarian socialist versus libertarian and and I just absolutely I mean he was halfway through the debate he's rolling his eyes and couldn't respond and it's like it's not it doesn't make any sense like your your personal versus private property argument like makes no sense it makes absolutely no right. sense if you he's like and he kept trying to come back to the you can't ha- have private property without the state argument which i think is horseshit right right and it, it's always confusing whether they're making a descriptive claim there or a prescriptive one right. like a descriptive claim of reality like that's just impossible or, or they're saying that if you own private property you're mimicking a state which i think is completely ridiculous so i think both of those claims are like just absurd yeah because there's... like a black market is um you know um discredits that argument that you cannot have private property without a state because they are extra at black markets are by definition extra legal like they're outside of the legal framework of the state and let you, you see private property um, arise from that all, all the time constantly yeah and a lot of drugs and guns right <laughs> yes. uh, uh marshall ford thanks for the five dollar super chat first of all jermaine vincent thanks for the twenty dollar super chat he says what's up gents what's up buddy uh jermaine is a huge supporter of the show and i appreciate him very much you have no idea uh marshall ford five dollar super chat he says he's got a very serious question for you ace Okay. So you're going to have to take some time to lay this out. And All I, right. And I, I think a lot of us that listen to Slurp Gang have the same question, to be honest with oh. you. Why are you and Cotton on Slurp Gang so mean to Jay? Just why, bro? Are you kidding me? Like, like have, you, have you ever, like, like, you must never have been in a chat with Jay. Like, like he is not a victim here. He deserves everything he gets. Not a victim at his, all. His his uh, Twitter is probably one of the most base Twitters out there, and he's he's like legit <laughs> yeah. Jewish, like right. Oh yeah, he is. He's and, legitimately and Jewish. and he's such very a very Jewish. He's such a big troll, and people probably are like, oh, that guy's a white nationalist. He hates the Jews. It's like, bro, uh, you see the rabbi in his name, right? Like he's. Yeah, he can't hate Jews. He's a rabbi. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just like it's just like Nick uh, Nick Ashley can't hate blacks because he's black. Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Turkish or black, right? Same thing. I don't know. Uh. Anyways, uh, we got another one from Nate Douglas, uh, five dollar super chat. He said, Ace, do you see any real evidence that the conservative right is being too or is capable of understanding the threat of the police? Yeah, we. I think we talked a little bit about this last time you were on the show and how yeah. red pilled people, the, the you know the rights getting on police. But yeah, do you see evidence for that? So. Um, I, I do see that actually. I'm not sure to what extent. Like, if you asked me the numbers on how what percentage of conservatives are actually um, getting red pilled on police, I would not know. But I definitely see an, a trend just anecdotally, right? I mean, um, uh, like uh, on January 6th, for example, when they were calling the cops pigs and things like that, and um, how they felt betrayed by the police. I think that's certainly something. Now, maybe they're not angry at the police for the same reason we are angry at the police, but I think it's certainly um, if you can kind of get that uh, anger within them, I think that they are primed for radicalization, which I think is a good thing. Now, I, I'm skeptical on how many of them actually are primed for radicalization on the police, but you know, any number, a plus one is a win in my opinion. So Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if we can, even if we can just get them to turn against the militar- militarization of the police yeah. in the least form, I mean, then we're, we're doing something good, you know, because a lot of them are always going to, you know, a lot of these conservatives respect the rule of law. I mean, that's what they, yes. they're, they're rule of law conservatives. They're not anarchists. Um, but if we could red pill them on like not militarizing the police or even just something as simple as like, uh, you know, um, changing the justice, you know, I, just anything. I mean, anything, anything. that we can yeah. get them to, to, you know, fight, you know, the drug war is a waste of time. I mean, just right. anything, justice reform, yeah. any of it, right. you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I think a lot of people can uh, assume that if you're a radical, you can't be a pragmatist in the sense that you can't like wish or hope for like incremental change. But it's, no, it's like you you want incremental change still works and it's still a great thing, but it's just not it's not your ideal. Right. You still have that ideal in the back of your head that you're always working towards. But any move, any step towards that is good. Right. 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 Um, yeah, it's it's well, and it's funny, you know, as anarchists, a lot of us. We do that really cringy thing where we're like, we want you to put, if you're not going to push the Murray Rothbard button, fuck you, right? 
And like, but we do we do have to realize how far away from the Murray Rothbard button we are. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? We're just right. so fucking far away that it's like <clears throat> if we just sit around and argue for the next forty years about how we need to have anarchy right. overnight, we'll never yeah. even get close to a, you know a constitutional republic or a night watchman state. I mean, we'll never even get right. there at all. You know, we'll right. just we'll sit around in our little ideological circle jerks arguing for the next forty years, fifty years, sixty years, and then die. You yeah. know, and yeah. hope that we left enough uh, uh, ide- ideology nerds in our wake to to get the job done. And so, um, yeah, I think incrementalism is, you know, as much as as much as I wish that we could just have it overnight, that's what we're going to have to do. If we ever and, want to and I and, you know, the whole thing about like what strategy should we assume? It's like I, I I'm kind of agnostic on this. And it's like, well, I, I'm fine with letting a thousand flowers bloom. Right. Like if, if some people want to like. I, I like whatever people want to do where they think that, okay, in this space, I think I can extend the bounds of liberty more than do it. Right. I think that's a great idea. Like, um, I don't think you should be locked down just to one strategy because, um, you know, just like there's no way one person can uh, know which strategy is going to be uh, extremely effective. So that's why we kind of need like, you know, um, experimentation in the, um, the process of uh, expanding liberty. Sure. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Sure. Sure. That's the new drinking game on break the cycle, by the way, every time I say sure, sure, everyone takes a shot. Oh. So, uh, they like to make fun of me. Or if I mention that I live in Iowa or if I mention my kids, I think there's several things that Iowa's not even a real state. Hey man, it's, it's <laughs> real. It's home to me. You know what I mean? And I enjoy That's it all that matters. I enjoy it here. It's nice, man. You like, yeah. you're like an East coast guy, right? You live on the East coast. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm actually in Maine, which is also a fake state. Right. Right. But they have good lobster though. They do. So Very if, good. If you like to eat the uh, sea roaches, is that what they are? <laughs> is that what they call them? Roaches? Is uh, I guess they do now. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's a there's like a whole country that calls them that or something. It's pretty it's pretty funny. But they were uh, they were considered like dirty, nasty like bugs of the sea for a long time, and now you know in America they're like a delicacy and we love right. them and eat them all the time. Yeah. But uh, you know, if the cicadas tasted like lobster, I'd probably eat the cicadas too. Yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I come from Illinois and there's like, you know, catfish down there and those are like some people just like are disgusted by catfish. So, you know, it's like lobster. I, I have no complaints. Yeah, I actually don't. I'm one of those people that doesn't like catfish, but I don't I don't mm-hmm. you know, I'm not disgusted by it or anything. I just don't yeah. like the flavor. I don't like a lot of freshwater fish. All the fish that oh, I like okay. are, are like saltwater, like, right. you know, the, the the shark and the halibut and this and the uh, uh, I like sturgeon. They can be both. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and then all the all the, you know, the hard shell crab lobster shrimp all that stuff but yeah i'm weird about freshwater fish i don't like trout or pike or any of that crap oh okay yeah i'm just not a fan too many bones in the trout to be honest with you right right uh, uh claire foster's in the house my, oh claire my favorite <laughs> troll my favorite yeah. the best right i don't know that there's i don't know if there's a better i i think the only person that's on the same level of trolling as claire foster is michael malice uh claire foster and john miles are great oh, miles uh, good. like that yeah. Yeah. Miles is great too. Uh, you know, fat Dave did a pretty good job with his account, <laughs> you know, but it's, uh, the, the, the absolute, um, uh, dedication to staying in character for Claire Foster right. is just yeah. fantastic. Fantastic. But, uh, they sent a, uh, super chat $5. Where do you wish for your ashes to be spread when you die? And why is it Somalia? Um, Somalia and over the bodies of my enemies. That's the one. That's the one. We want to do some grave dancing. Yeah. End of life. Time for grave dancing for sure, man. Um, oh, uh, Craig, yes. Mike Shipley. That was that's Mike's last name. Um Do you do you know do you do you know Mike Shipley? That's the one that goes by uh, Mike. Yeah, Shipley. yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, I I don't know him too well, but I, I've uh, interacted with him on Twitter, I think, a couple times. At I'm least, terrible with names, so I, I want to say yes. I, I know of him for sure, for sure. At, at least he's anti war. You know, that's a good right. thing. You know, he, but he's he's one of those. He actually left the Libertarian Party. I think he's become a full blown tanky now. It's really really sad. Mm-hmm. It's really sad. Um, so, uh, well, what was, oh, let's. Uh, what are some other things that you think the conservatives have gotten red pilled out about over the last year and a half? Has he seen anything else? Uh, certainly the media, right? I think that's probably the biggest one. Even over the cops, um, this idea that. Um, what what they're told in the media is not just like the media is not just um, biased or they're not just, you know, um, they just, you know, they're just bad at reporting, which is something you would see a lot of conservatives used to say in a long time. But it's like, no, they actually have an agenda and they actually hate you. 
right? That's, and I think that is probably one of the uh, best ways we can reach out to these types of uh, conservatives to say, yeah, these people hate you. And why would you ever want to share, you know, a political structure with them? Yeah. The enemy of the people as, uh, right. as Michael Malice says, and I do, I, the corporate, the corporate news media is the enemy of the people. And, uh, you know, we try to, we, we try to make alternative outlets like the show and other people's shows on YouTube and stuff. And then you get kicked off. You know what I mean? For not going right. with approved narrative. So it's like, how, how do we get that media out like that? You know what I mean? Right. Right. It's, it's, it's yeah, insane. It's, it's yeah. It, it's still an ongoing debate or question, right? Yeah. It's, you know, hopefully, hopefully Donald Trump will come I, I and save feel, us. I do feel like, you know, uh, what we've seen from the media in the past is they do feel like they're losing control, right? There, there's that old, there's that meme. It's like, you know, um, if the situation was hopeless, their propaganda would be unnecessary. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, you can always take that and, uh, you know, look at that as like a good thing. Sure. Absolutely. Man. So, so we're on the precipice of mandates, man. Right. Um, yeah. And that's some scary shit. I, I have lucky, lucky to live in a place that, uh, the mandates have pr- what, from what we understood, the mandates were supposed to be illegal here. Uh, they passed legislation to make the mask mandate le- illegal, uh, COVID vaccine mandates illegal, um, but now they're m- mandating it for healthcare workers in Iowa, and you know yeah. that's you know that's the beginning, right? And I mean, look at New York, right? Look what they what they did in New York. They mandated it for like both workers and people entering businesses at all. That's right. Yeah, it was like, well, it was like, uh, it started with the entertainment industry in New York, right? That was going to be the thing. Bars, restaurants, nightclubs, shit like that. Um, but now it's, it's slowly becoming everything. Mm-hmm, right? Yeah. And we got de Blasio out here looking like the fucking bad guy from V for Vendetta. Right. Like, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Like giving uh, like, you know, these speeches, like you will not be able to participate in society if you do not take this thing. And it's like, yeah, and that's and that, that for people who don't know, that's not really uh, hyperbole at all. He actually said something just like that. I mean, one hundred percent. And when we yeah. were ta- when we were talking about this, right? When we were talking about this uh, a year ago, you know, everyone's like, "You're a fucking conspiracy theorist. That shit's never going to happen. We're never going to have to deal with that." Right? It's happening. Yeah, I, I mean, like, like this is why you never give these people an inch. You ne- like, even if you think, well, this is reasonable, right? So even if someone thought, well, you know, this is reasonable, I think COVID might be dangerous, it's reasonable. No, even if you think that, you don't ever, ever, ever let these people get away with what they're trying to do because they will take more, right? So even if you thought the four, well, 14 days to fly on the curve, well, look what that turned into, right? You know what I mean? So it's like they do like it's the old allegory of like you know yeah you you can't put the frog in the boiling pot of water immediately you have to put the gently put them in the water and then slowly turn the water up over and over to boil them so that by the time they're boiling it's too late you know what i mean and that's exactly what they do uh with all their policies but especially this and and if you don't if you do not draw a line in the sand these people will keep going oh yeah and it's you know we should have learned from the patriot act right it's, yeah yeah it, I don't know. It's like 9-11 happened. Everybody's like, oh, God, they're, they can attack us here. We need, we need to do something, you know? And they're like, okay, we're going to put in a temporary policy. Uh, we're going to have some security at airports uh, real quick. And, and this is, you know, the Patriot Act's going to be brief, going to go away. And here it is 20 years later, and we're still, still dealing with it. Right. Uh, how the fuck do we slap people and wake them up, man? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think, you know, you could say the last year has also been a pretty big black pill because you know, like, who who the people are, how far they'll go and keep going, how the, how far they'll be pushed by, you know, the uh, the people leading them. And it's just it, it, apparently they'll be pushed to practically no end until they snap. But um, uh, so that's kind of a black pill. But then again, you can look at it as well. At least now, you know, who is who. Do you, you know what I mean? At least, you know, now which people actually side with liberty and are actually serious about it and which people will just at the end of the day uh stick up for the state and defend them ultimately but it's so scary because there's so many so many people willing to uh just forego any kind of liberty and freedom in this country i i I will say though um you know um almost all like movements like the, the revolutionary war right the things like that it's like all these movements that had big social changes almost never had large amounts of people supporting them. You know what I mean? It was always a very small, small minority. So um, I, I think it's about getting the right people to create um, like 
liberty outside the state or um, create things um, where you can essentially neuter these people. You can essentially stop them from taking power, things like that to make them make it so the state has less impact on your life in a day to day in a day to day way. Once you do that. Um, then you don't really need to care about the opinions of the masses, right? Because that's the ultimate goal, in my opinion, which is that, like, we we might not ever be able to have a mass movement, like a a majority of people on our side, but we can certainly do things to make them less powerful. Sure. Yeah, that's, you know, and I think Dave Dave Smith talks about that sometimes, where it's like, we don't need 50% of the population. No. Man, we need... We need 20% or 10% or 15% and that yeah. will be a movement. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. it, it really doesn't take that much. Uh, let's see. Jermaine Def- Vincent, thank you for another $5 super chat. Ace, if you could delete one philosopher's works from history, who would it be? Oh. That's a good one. Oh God, this is, oh man, that's a great question. Um, just by the I, way, I, it'd have to be Marx for me. I mean. I, I, yeah, I, I want to. Well, I was going to say Marx, but I actually think Hegel because Hegel oh. preceded Marx. And if you get rid of Hegel, I don't think you even get Marx at all. So I'm going to take both out simultaneously and go with Hegel. Yeah, Hegel might be good. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. The Hegelian. Yeah, yeah, that's actually really good. Uh, if there's one that you could get everybody to read, who would it be? Oh God, um, I could. Okay, so I could go with the Normie. Uh, well, I, I say Normie, but it's obviously not. I, I was going to say Rothbard. Um, Honestly, okay. So if if I could get everyone in the world to read them, it would probably be Rothbard, right? But if I'm talking about just for people in our circle, um, uh, probably Deleuze. Deleuze is an uh, uh, he was a French uh, philosopher and writer, and he's one of the most underrated anarchists. He's a post structuralist, uh, which is pretty interesting, but he um, kind of varies from them just a little bit. And I would definitely recommend more people in this space who are interested in um, different ways of thinking. Uh, definitely looking to lose. Sure. Yeah. I uh, I would probably go with Mer- Rothbard too for the normies. Yeah. Rothbard or, or even F. A. Hayek is a really good one. It's yeah. uh, doesn't take it far enough, but it's right. The the something about the road to serfdom really can change the minds. And so if we could get more people to uh, get red pilled on just the dangers of central planning, like that would yeah. change so much. So. Um, but you know, Rothbard, yeah, I mean, for a new liberty or even just the yeah. anatomy of the state, cause it's so, yeah. it's so short and people can uh, pay attention to it. Um, I saw you arguing, uh, was it, was it you, somebody asked you on Twitter recently and like name one anarchist society that's ever been successful and you named like five. Was that you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do that, uh, quite a bit when people argue with me, what, <laughs> I what, like pulling them out. What states were those? Uh, okay. So you have ancient Ireland, which lasted for 2000 years that we have like recorded, um, uh, it, there's actually some evidence that lasted for 9,000, but the evidence on that is more sketchy, and I, I'm not willing to like put my, all my faith behind that. But it, I, I certainly don't doubt that that's possible. Then you have medieval Iceland, uh, which was anarchist for around 400 years. Um, you have a Kospaya, which was at, which is actually pretty funny because um, uh, one of the popes, uh, I think it was Eugene the Fourth. Um, was trying to sell some land to Fl- um, the Republic of Florence, and he messed up the the uh, like the line the on where the like the he was selling the land to, and Cospia was left out, and it, it just remained stateless for 386 years. And so that that's a good one. God, um, I've seen what you've done for others, and I wish I, you could do that for me too. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So um, that's a, always a good one. I love that one. Um, then you have the people of Zomia in Southeast Asia, which is still going today. The population, I think there's like 200 million people that are actually stateless in the world right now. It's not a society, but it's most more so a people and societies within that space that are just completely stateless. Sure. And so how did these places become uh, uh, statified, man? What happened? Well, eventually, you know, uh, sta- they did get uh, taken over eventually, or they did, you know, fall. But I, I always say in this res- in response to this argument, it's like, yeah, well, states can be taken over, right? And and also, larger states can take over smaller states. You know what I mean? Right now, that could happen. That could and does happen right now. So, I if you're saying that we can't have an anarchist society because it could be taken over, we need a world government or we need a government over people, you know, so, like to stop that from happening. It seems the logical conclusion to that argument is that we need a world government to stop uh, nation states from doing the same thing individuals would do in an anarchist society, which is take over the little guy. Right. Right. So uh, I think that's the logical conclusion to that world belief. 
Well, and it, I mean, if, uh, for all intents and purposes, I mean, they don't. It is, this is probably one of the reasons why they do it this way uh, is so that they don't, you know, they don't make the normies believe that we're involved in in uh, conquest and, and imperialism. When we right. when we when we defeat these little countries in in the Middle East and then install our own d- democratic government. What the fuck do you think we're doing? You know what I mean? Like right, we're, not, right. we're we're taking we we took over that country. We just put our own little puppet dictator in there and said, "Okay, this is yeah, what you're going to do." Yeah, for some reason don't ever uh, bring that up. Yeah, that's that's interesting, right? Yeah, I wonder I wonder why because then the normies would understand that what what, you know, the empire is doing and uh they might turn against the empire. Yeah, one would hope. <laughs> one would hope, absolutely. Andy, ba- Andy Baker, thanks for the uh, ten dollars super chat, man. You rule. He said the the overreach is how we wake the normies up. We need iconic leadership. God, we need iconic leadership. Yeah, I mean, you certainly need someone to like be like you know um, a canary in the coal mine or a, you know some type of town crier uh, to try to wake. I, I'm not convinced you can wake a lot of people up, but certainly every person you can wake up because of that is a win. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a shitty way to go about it, but uh, sometimes it's what it takes, man. Sometimes it's what it takes. Oh, Burt Grimm's in the chat. Everyone drop your pants. Uh, <laughs> Burt's he, awesome. He says, yo, how the fuck did you manage to get David Koresh on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Every time with this guy. He's hilarious, man. We'll have to have Burt back on sometime, too. That was a fun show, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah, he's great. Go, yeah, go give Neocon Remover a follow on Twitter. That yeah. guy's awesome. Yeah, it's, and and it's like I never know if he's actually on Twitter anymore or not. I'm always wondering if they've pulled him off again or not. Uh, right. And at one time, I said that he got he got removed, and then um, that my guest was like, "No, he's not. He's on there right now." I'm like, "What the fuck? He was removed earlier." It's just you never know if you never. They know. always come back. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Joshua Pearson, thanks for the five dollars super chat. He said, "If you could wave a hand and banish one tax." Which one would you banish? Keep up the good work, guys. Uh, uh, banish one what? One tax. Oh, one tax. Okay. Ooh. I mean, I, I think probably income tax is probably the one I would go with, although property tax is also very pernicious. So um, I, I think I'm still going to go income. Yeah, and it's, you know, we know we know 100% that the state uh, still existed without an income tax. I, uh, you know, it's so funny how many normies don't know. That yeah. like the income tax was instituted in like what was it nineteen thirteen or something? It was during the World War. Or... I mean, well, it was also it was first instituted by Lincoln during the war. Actually, the first income tax, and that was regarded as unconstitutional <laughs> when he did it. Shocking, so... shocking. Mm-hmm. I think it's still regarded as unconstitutional. In fact, I had a uh, Dan Berman on the show recently. Are you familiar with Dan Berman? Dan, yeah, taxation theft Berman. Yep. The dude laid it out how. Like you can basically not pay taxes and you, you know, most people are like, yeah, try that and see what happens. Like, no, he like laid it out, like how you can do it. And he's mm-hmm. like, you know, has talked to all these people who have actually done it and has these books on it and shit. Uh, so if you haven't watched my episode with Dan Berman, uh, definitely check that out, man. Cause he, he basically told you how to run drugs from Mexico and, and to, uh, not pay taxes. Like what a great show, man. Right. Yeah. That's, that, that's the stuff they don't teach you in school. Yeah. Well, and the guy, the guy runs, uh, he runs insulin across the border from Mexico. Um, and so, oh, that, oh, that's right. Yeah, that yeah. he's a hero. Yeah, yeah, absolute hero. He's given people. He's given diabetics. Uh, you know, for twelve dollars a pin, and those pins mm-hmm. are hundred dollars here or something like right. that. Uh, yeah, and and uh, the government can't catch him, man. He's great. That's awesome. Yeah, he's like he's like our own, our very own uh, generation's Dallas Buyers Club, man. Right. Yeah. For real. Yeah. I uh, I talked about that on my first show with Pete Raymond, Dallas Buyers Club, and how uh, you know, Anthony, uh, Dr. Fauci. Dr. Fauci, uh, he, he was the head of the, uh, HIV AIDS task force, um, that, and he was also the one that pushed AZT on, um, all the HIV patients and it, you know, find out later that killed thousands and thousands of people. And, uh, it, it, it made us have to go, you know, basically risk our freedom to go to Mexico and traffic, uh, life-saving therapeutics back from Mexico because the FDA and, and, and Fauci and all these people wouldn't approve these drugs that they knew helped. And now we're listening to him about a vaccine that has no testing whatsoever. So yeah, and, and you know, just on that for a second, it, it's like you know, we can all uh, and justifiably so we all you know talk about how the state is uh, committing actual mass murder or starvation in other countries or locking people up in cages right now as we speak and just you know doing all these horrific, horrific things. Uh, but we also have to remember that how many people have they killed just because of drugs? Certain drugs have been illegal, right? 
Like, like it's just the knock on effects of that is just incredible. It's, it's massive. It's terrible. Sure. Well, and if you know, is, I mean, just look at wheat for crying out loud. I live, yeah. um, unfortunately I live in a place where, uh, they're still arresting people for simple possession here. Um, you know, and I come from the West coast where it's like fucking seven 11s for weed on every street corner. Right? right. You walk in and be like, yo, I got anxiety. What do you guys got? And they're like, Hey, we got right. this one for 50 and eighth. We got this one for 20 and eight. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and now I live in a place where everybody's like, they can't even carry CBD oil on you. You can get arrested here, which is just fucking insane. Um, but you know, they're not, they really don't care about your best interest. I mean, is there, do, how do people still uh, wake up every day and go, you know, the government's got my best interests at heart. I don't get it. Yeah. I, it's incredible. I, I think to a certain extent, like they're just not, um, they just don't see it directly. Right. And also they don't, they also don't face the cost for it directly. You know what I mean? Like a lot of these people who are like, you know, Oh yeah. Who cares about it if drugs are illegal? These are the people who would not ever, you know, risk, using drugs in the first place or risk, you know, uh, at least openly, at least, you know, selling them or anything. So they don't really experience the cost of doing something like that. So it, if they don't experience the cost of doing it, they're likely just to hand wave it away. It's just some, oh, oh, well, you know, who cares? Who cares about that kid who got locked up for, you know, 50 years for selling weed three times in a row? Yeah, absolutely, man. It's just, it's insane how, yeah. you know, and that's, it really, go, it all goes back to that same point of people want to use state power for their own morals. And that's why we yeah. shouldn't have a state because it's immoral. Right. 100%. Uh, Top Lobster, thanks for the $2 super chat. Uh, he said, Ace should be a reoccurring monthly guest. I don't disagree. I don't. No. Oh. Yeah, but I think, I think Slurp Gang would be pretty sad. You know, I'd be still, I'd be still in their thunder, man. And they, they got a good thing going on over there. Plus the also uh, shout out to top lops that he's made two like he's makes so much uh, great art and he made uh, great art for the debate uh, that um, Brad and I had uh, on lines of Liberty. He just makes amazing art. Great dude. The dude is just fantastic. Uh, yeah. Guys, we need you to throw us more money so he can get paid. Truly. That's what it's all about. Uh, he, the guy's trying to get out of the basement. You know what I mean? He's, he's hungry. <laughs> he needs somebody to eat. Uh, pay pay this man. Uh, no, we're we're getting to a point now where uh, where he should be able to get a monthly paycheck from the show. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's important. And uh, yeah. I hope that you guys are buying his clothes. I know I I know I know I know plenty of people who've bought Top Lobster clothes, but everybody should buy him. He comes out with like new designs every two days. So uh, and if you haven't seen him, he hand draws fucking everything. Um, but his his renditions of Ace have been pretty pretty solid, man. Oh yeah, I was very happy with him. That's awesome. Yeah, he's just great. Have you seen his uh, his one for Eric Brakey? Who was the other one that was debating? It was Eric Brakey and uh, God? Now I'm not gonna remember who he's debating, but he made it all WWF like uh, uh, Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan. Oh, I, I wasn't that Mark Clair. Was it Mark Clair doing the debate? Yeah, because Mark Clair was doing a debate. Yeah, oh, he was, I didn't know. I'm Mark. pretty sure he was the other one there. Yeah. Oh man, Mark Clair debating. I have. I don't think I've ever seen Mark Clair in a debate. That'd be fun to watch. Uh, yeah so man uh we're, we're getting close to the end of the the public stream you know we do i do a, i do a, a private members only stream when i'm done with the public stream now i know that mm -hmm. didn't that didn't happen last time you were here that's a new thing because we have enough uh channel supporters to justify that uh but what do you got coming up man what do you got going on uh so um the debate uh which we were talking about earlier between uh brad palumbo and i with mark claire hosting on lines of liberty the resolution was um, political violence is never acceptable in democratic societies. That debate is live on their Patreon right now. So if you're a subscribed member to the Lions of Liberty Patreon, you can watch that right now. Um, it is for if you don't subscribe to it, it is coming out on August 9th. So this uh, this August 9th, it's coming out publicly to release. Um, besides for that, you can find me on Twitter at Ace underscore Arcist. Uh, I co-host the show Slurp Gang with uh, uh, my buddy Con and Jay. And also, uh, I wanted to say I, I made a tweet earlier that pissed some people off. I did not know what the drink Powerade was, and I publicly apologized to everyone. That's okay. So I got like so many DMs about this Powerade thing. <laughs> so many DMs, and, and I, I told everybody who who messaged me on uh, on Twitter, drop it in the super chat, and not a single person dropped it in the super chat. Uh, but let's, what happened, man? What happened? Let's talk about. I, it. I, yeah, okay. Well, um, I, I, for some reason, I just never um, had that brand, and I did not know of its existence, and I'm apparently the only person on this entire earth that did not know about that brand, and I got a lot of my friends very pissed off. What did you, what did you post? No, because I, 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 they, they were uh, insulted that I did not know about it. 
Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, they, you know, it was all it was all joking and fun, but you know, it's. <laughs> I, I thought it was funny, but yeah. Well, here's the thing. Uh, Gatorade's better anyways. Yes, that's, yeah, thank you. And that, and that, is that what made everyone mad? Because Gatorade's good, man. Powerade's uh, kind no, of... No, they, they were more insulted because they thought I lived under a rock. Oh, I see, I see, I see. And honestly, I don't know how I didn't know that either because I, I'm like, I... Like, yeah, that's the part I don't understand either. How yeah, do you... that was the... I don't know. I like I, I just blocked it out, I guess. Maybe it's... I had some like PTSD bad experience years ago and I forever like blocked it out of my mind i don't know but. somebody like somebody in the family like beat the shit out of you with a power yeah. bottle or something when you were a <laughs> that's kid that's right yeah I, I don't it doesn't make any sense it's in like every cooler at every corner store man i i have no idea that's no wild idea. man yeah it, it's like i hopped into some universe where previously it didn't exist now it does i don't know yeah that's wild man yeah. you're you're from what you're from the timeline that has the uh sinbad genie movie that's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. Uh, well, Ace, I appreciate you coming on, brother. Can you tell Thanks all these so wonderful much. people where they can follow you, how they can support you, how they can listen to your show, all that great stuff? Sure. So uh, you can listen to Slurp Gang, although, you know, at your own discretion. Um, <laughs> um, listen to it on pretty much any podcatcher. Uh, you want Anchor, Spotify, uh, Apple. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at Ace underscore Arcist, and you'll find me probably quote tweeting by the time you – hop over to my timeline so yeah sure man well hey uh i didn't expect you to come on and do this face reveal first show and have a better better camera than me uh oh. so i just gotta let you know my my hater aid is a little jealous right now uh but but it, it looks great we're we're glad Thank to you. have a face to the uh twitter account now um and uh if you can just hang on like two minutes we'll start the uh, the members only stream thanks a lot brother. yeah for sure man ace rules Ace rules. Go follow Ace. Why aren't you guys look? Ace Ace needs to be to ten thousand followers by Sunday. Okay, we need to get him there. I think he's close. I think he's like eight or nine something. So let's let's do that. It can happen. Uh, but go follow the man. Listen to Slurp Gang. He's uh he's so cool, and that that podcast is hilarious. Um, it's definitely up there with not a podcast. If you haven't checked that one out, um, and so uh those guys are all amazing, and uh, you should be listening. Also. If you guys want to get into the members only chats after the show, uh, which I do after every single show, five nights a week, uh, well, except for I didn't do Monday this week, but uh, five nights a week, I do extra content for members. You can join here for six bucks a month on YouTube under the join link on in any of my videos, or you can join the Patreon subscribe star and get the uh, video uploaded either the next day or the day after. Sometimes it's a little bit longer, just depending, um, but join that stuff, help support break the cycle and get yourself some cool swag. Uh, get into a cool private Discord community with awesome, awesome people like Stefan Kinsella and Angela McArdle and, uh, God, just so many good people. Jermaine Vincent's in there um, and a bunch of the executive producers for the show. Um, so do that. And also, you know, you get the top lobster perks and all that great stuff. Um, and also check out our sponsors, Lorenzotti.coffee, for all your delicious Italian coffee needs delivered directly to your door. Bring the taste of Italy home. Use BTC at checkout for a 10% discount. And, of course, my friend, my partner on the show, the coolest guy you know, TopLobster.com, for all your wonderful graphic design needs, including this great Scott Horton in the wars, bright red hoodie that I'm wearing tonight. You can get a 10% discount for uh, by using BTC at checkout. Um, or, like I said, you can join any of the great platforms we have for extra content and get his new gear up to two weeks early at a 30% discount. You'll be sporting it uh, before anyone else can even order it, which is pretty cool. And, of course, executive producer of the show, AnthemPlanning.com, for all your emergency and crisis planning needs. Check these people out today. See what they can do for you, your home, uh, or your personal life. And your business, God, I fucked that one up real good. Uh, some some days, man, some days. Uh, go check them out and see what they can do for your your business, your personal life, or your home. They're doing a wonderful job that the government typically sucks at, much cheaper and much more efficiently. Guys, tomorrow on the show, I'm going to have a talk with uh, my good friend Guy Squiggs. If you're familiar with him on Facebook or Twitter, uh, he has a Japanese wife, and he wants to come on and talk about uh, the uh, World War II and the atomic bomb drops. He actually works with Austin Peterson and, and reached out to me after the show. He's kind of going to be a competitive view in that aspect. It's going to be a good show to end the week, too. Um, next week, I have some amazing shows lined up for you guys. You have no idea. In fact, on Tuesday, I'm going to be doing a conspiracy-only show with uh, the great Ryan Dawson. My friend Dave Casey from Dave vs. Goliath and also uh, uh, Dan Smots from the System is Down podcast. 
It's going to be tremendous, and I believe we are going to stream it directly to Odyssey so we don't get kicked off YouTube. That's how that's how gnarly it's going to be. So go follow my uh, Odyssey account, Break the Cycle with Joshua Smith. You can find me on there. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the show with Guy Squiggs. But until then, don't forget to break the cycle. to explain the lyrics of my last song may seem to contain a violent call to action in the verse and the frame but i just spent it in minecraft the helicopter part was in reference to gta 5 and the things you do so any violence you commit i am not an excuse because i just spent it in minecraft what trooper is my friend and he's constantly cold accusations of incitement getting totally old Make your own choices, yeah, you have control Because I just meant it in Minecraft Obviously I would never advocate force Unless it's due process and a trial, of course And if you're convicted, we will make you a corpse In Minecraft, just in Minecraft There are nothing I mean, you know it No product theaters, get to close to COVID Holy shit, I think I'm